title of uh, today's webinar is Seismic Design Guidelines for Solid and Perforated Hybrid Precast Concrete Shear Walls. Uh, this is uh, an outcome from a, a recent uh, project that we completed at Notre Dame uh, with funding from the Charles Pankow Foundation and PCI. Uh, and I'd like to present to you uh, things that we learned about the behavior of uh, hybrid precast concrete shear walls uh, under lateral loading. Uh, how to design them to perform um, adequately under seismic loading, what are some of the important critical design features um, uh, for them, and also complete with a full-scale design example that I'd like to try to fit in uh, this to our webinar. I've got about 90 slides. Um, I'm not sure uh, uh, how we're going to do with timing. We may have to adjust on the question and answer sessions depending on how we go with the timing. Um, so moving on to the first uh, slide here, just a brief background on previous research on seismic precast shear wall systems. Uh, this research really date, dates back quite, quite a long time, all the way to early 1990s. Uh, that started in the U.S. with the uh, NSF and PCI-funded uh, precast seismic structural systems um, research program, or shortly the PRESS research program. Uh, there were a number of uh, universities and laboratories and, and research groups that looked into uh, how to make precast concrete structures um, uh, better perform in uh, seismic regions. Um, researchers looked at single uh, as well as coupled walls. And if you look at the image down below, I don't know if everybody can see my cursor here, but uh, the two wall configurations, these are elevations, are showing single walls. Uh, and each pier here can be made out of a single panel, precast concrete panel. Um, a single panel would be a short wall for transportation purposes, or multi-panel systems uh, where you've got longer walls and therefore you need to make the entire a wall uh, out of multiple panels that are joined at each floor level. Uh, and researchers also looked at coupled configurations uh, where you might have a vertical joint with mechanical couplers or coupling beams as uh, shown here. Uh, importantly, of course, the, um, the, the critical features of the connections between the precast members and the foundation uh, were found very early, also from earthquake reconnaissance. And researchers looked at, uh, in general, two different uh, categories of connections. One would be an emulative connection, uh, where uh, the structure is designed to behave similarly uh, under lateral loading to a, a conventional monolithic cast in place reinforced concrete shear sure wall in terms of stiffness, strength, um, ductility, and toughness. Uh, and others looked at um, uh, different types of systems, which are categorized as jointed or non-emulative uh, systems. And these take advantage of the unique characteristics of precast systems, especially in terms of gap opening uh, along the joints. So these uh, structures, jointed structures, behave differently than um, conventional monolithic systems under seismic loading. So hybrid walls. Uh, falls under the category of jointed uh, systems. Uh, the uh, principle is very similar to the hybrid precast concrete frame system that also came out of the press research program and subsequent research projects. And these two, uh, I would say, are, are the most successful jointed uh, systems that came out of uh, these research projects. Um, so specifically looking at the wall system that we're going to talk about today, um, uh, we're looking at a single wall system, so we did not look at coupled uh, systems, also, although some of the concepts can be applied. And we also looked at multi-panel systems, um, where you've got these rectangular wall panels that are stacked on top of each other across horizontal joints. The most critical joint is, is at the base, uh, so the concepts that we're going to talk about can be applied to single panel systems as well, where you've got only one joint between the panel and the foundation. Um, so the unique feature here is uh, that um, we purposefully allow a large gap to open at the base of the system between the base panel and the foundation. Uh, this makes uh, this configuration a jointed system. Um, it makes it behave differently than uh, conventional systems, especially in terms of um, the ability of the structure to undergo large lateral displacements with relatively little damage. Uh, in other words, all of the tensile deformations, or most of the tensile deformations, are concentrated at the base. Um, so the name hybrid here comes from the fact that we use two different types of reinforcement for uh, lateral resistance across the critical base joint. Uh, the first one is the post-tensioning uh, system, 
um, and this uh, post tensioning steel is uh, comprised of multi strand uh, tendons. Uh, they run from the foundation all the way to the top of the structure. Uh, they're deliberately not bonded to the concrete, they're placed inside uh, unbonded, ungrouted ducts. Uh, and their purpose is, in addition to providing lateral resistance across the joints, uh, to provide a large restoring effect, a linear elastic self centering effect to the system resisting this gap opening and then at the end of the earthquake or lateral loading pulling the system back to the original position closing uh, these gaps.